What is good YouTube? Welcome back to the channel and today we'll be going over how I created this Fear of God goalie jersey inside Marvelous Designer. In this tutorial we'll be going over how to do a drop sleeve, how to do a mock neck and also how to get that baggy aesthetic that Fear of God has really been pushing for the athletic collection. With that being said, let's hop into the video. Alright, so the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and drag and drop our avatar. We're going to be using a male and you can either pick Nate or Henry or any other one. Today we're going to be using using Henry so go ahead and click on that so once we have him dropped in all there's a few things that we need to do let's go ahead and change our UV to a 2d pattern and we're gonna drag and drop this t-shirt pattern on him now the good thing about marvelous designer that it has a lot of templates that is available to use so use the templates use them use them use them it'll speed up your workflow all right so once we got our t-shirt on there there's a couple things that we need to do in order to get the mock net and drop seed now I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I first started this project, I did not know what a mock neck was and I did not know what a drop sleeve was. So it took a lot of research in order to really understand how this pattern is constructed. First thing we're going to do to apply this pattern is just drop down the sleeve cuffs. I want to bring it to about there. Yeah, that looks good. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow the garment to be a little bit baggy on our avatar. Now, once we drop that sleeve, in order to make the garment a little bit bigger, we're gonna extend both the sides of the front and the sides of the back. Now, you need to do this at the same time because if not, you're gonna have to do it one by one and they might not be accurate of how you want them. So there we go, just dropping that sleeve down just a little bit more. And then now what we need to do is we need to actually measure out the sewing so we can know how much to enlarge our sleeves. So now you can see that everything is fitting perfectly. Now, the reason why we need to check our sewing is because if your sewing doesn't match up from your sleeve cap to the shirt, it's going to look crumply. And we don't want that. We want it to be as perfect and as measured as we can get it. So just trying out with the sleeve cap height, this will give your garment a different look. So just experiment. Also research how the cap height affects because for some garments, for example, like a suit, the higher the cap is, the more pointy and pronounced that the shoulders would be. And the more low and slope is the more drapey that it would be. So for our case, that was perfect. Now, one thing that I need to do is just do a little bit more adjustment so we can get that sleeve looking right. Because in the actual reference, you can see that there's a split in between. I want to say about the elbow down to the wrist. So once we got that done, let's go ahead and extend this out just a little bit more. There we go. Now you can see we're definitely getting the aesthetic that we want. All right. So now we are ready to extend our sleeve pattern. So go ahead and just click it and drag it down a little bit. Make sure that everything fits. There you go. Just a little bit more. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Now just looking around. Let's look at our reference a little bit more. So the thing about this, when I was extending out the pattern sleeves, I noticed that in the reference that it didn't go all the way to the hand, but it was about, I want to say, couple inches from the wrist so after i've done that what we want to do is add an internal line so we can make that split that we just talked about a few minutes ago so with the split what we're going to do is extend the external line to both of the edges and hit cut and sew so now you can see that we have two pattern pieces and then all we want to do is just bring the sleeve cuffs in a little bit All right, so once we got that complete, let's go ahead and start working on adjusting to get that mock neck aesthetic. So as you can see, just adjusting. Now this is a nice technique that you can use to line up your pattern so you can adjust the back and the front at the same time. It's the same principle that we used when extending the sides. Cause like I said, you don't want to extend one side and then have to extend the other side and they're there. They're not even or matched up. So once we got that now, let's go ahead and create that raglan sleeve. So the raglan sleeve is basically a sleeve that is connected to the neck of the garment. So once we got the front piece back, we can also do the same process for the back. 
Now, it wouldn't make sense to have a raglan sleeve in the front and then a regular sleeve in the back. So, of course, we have to do both sides. And it's the same principle. All right. So, let's just drop that down just a little bit and then fix our endpoints. Make sure that everything is clean. Now, once we got that, let's go ahead and do another cut and sew and make sure that everything is lining up. So cut and sew. all right perfect so once we got all four pieces what we could do is now we can actually merge them so as i slide it over to the sleeve you can kind of see what we're going for so now so now what we could do is right click and hit merge and then we also want to do that for the other piece also perfect now you can see that the sleeve is connected to the main piece of garment and it's also connected to the neck that is exactly what we want. All right, so once we got everything merged, let's go ahead and move on how we're going to grade the collar. For the collar, I did a new technique. So just experiment with different ways of getting the collar. So what I did was offset as a pattern outline. So why this is so important is because once we extend it out, we can also click create eternal line, which will give us an eternal line where we extended this out so once we extend it we can cut it and merge all the pieces together so we know we have a perfectly fitted collar and then hit create eternal line and then hit okay so now all the pieces that have eternal line we can click them and hit cut so make sure we get the raglan sleeves there we go so you want to do cut and sew all right perfect so when we extend it out it does not automatically merge for us so now we need to go back with our sewing tool and just merge it back together all right, so let's continue sewing them. Now, after we're done sewing, just go ahead and simulate, but you see we do have an issue here. So when you run into issues like that or your garment is going a little crazy, that just means that you made a mistake. So go ahead and just backtrack and see where you made that mistake and then fix it. There we go, making sure that all the pieces are connected together through the stitching. All right, so what I'm doing right here is just making a point on the sleeve so I know exactly where I need to sew. So you can see as we look on the right side and the left side, as I'm clicking back and forth, back and forth, I just wanna make sure that I'm doing the correct side. Cause if not, it's gonna sew to the opposite side and that's when that twisting and crumpling effect of the garment happens. All right, so once that is sewn together, let's go ahead and merge these pieces together. All right, perfect. So now that we have the back merge and we also going to merge the side so that the pattern is one continuous and not broken up so go ahead and merge those and then now we just need to do a couple cleanup so i deleted that point so i can add a curve there you go now we're getting a better shape forgot to merge this piece but let's merge it and we're going to delete that point and add another curve just to bring it all together now i know it looks extremely funny but we're gonna work this until it gets right all right let's go ahead and rotate it all right so once we got the main collar down now what we need to do is actually split part of the front because if we look at our reference image on the bottom right you can see that the collar does not go all the way to the middle like a traditional button up shirt it stops about an inch or a couple inches from the center line so in order to create that we're going to use an external line and we're going to cut and we're just going to delete this piece and we're going to do that to the other side also now once we do that we do need to merge the back there you go let's turn it so now what we can do is just extend that out Let's create a eternal line so that we can actually fold the top half of the collar. So we just want to make sure that it's lining up. And once that is good, is where we want it. So after that, we're going to use the fold arrangement tool and we're just going to fold it outwardly. There we go. Now with the collar complete, let's go ahead and start adding some material to our garment so we can see how this looks. So we're just gonna use a nylon canvas. Gonna turn the color black. All right, so let's go ahead and start working on the sleeve. For the sleeve pattern, it's a rectangle. 
So we need about three rectangles and we're gonna do that with the external lines. So just adjust the points until we get the shape that is desired. And now all we have to do, instead of doing more work, just duplicate your sections. So once we duplicate it, go ahead and extend it out with some more points. And then we're going to just draw out this last one. Set so is complete. Now we need to make sure that all the points are connected to the end. Cause if not, it will not let us cut and sew. So I kind of just had to use my imagination, but it's the same principle. So once we have all our points laid out, so after we got that situated, let's go ahead and highlight it and cut and sew. So now you see that we have our pattern outline. So let's go ahead and drag and drop the nylon canvas. All right, there we go. I think it's looking good. So now you can see that our pattern is coming together. So just doing a couple, look around, make sure that we didn't miss anything. All right, so with the sleeve done, let's go ahead and merge the front piece and the back piece so we do not have a seam line running through the middle. So just click the edges and hit merge. Also click these edges and hit merge also. So now we got the front and the back and they are one piece. So now let's go ahead and make this little small patch that's in the back. We're going to use this rectangle and then we're going to go through this. We're going to add some curve points to it. So go ahead and right click it and we're going to hit to convert to curve point. Now it will give us a funny shape, but that's okay. All we need to do is just using V and adjust the curve points. Now we have something that is more like a squirreled oval. Now moving forward, now what we need to do is actually make another shape so we can sew a piece to the back of the internal line that we just created. Now what we're going to do is just copy and paste the internal line and then we're going to mirror paste. And then we're also going to merge those points together so that it is one single continuous line. Now, once we have that continuous line, what we need to do is cut a piece out of the fabric that we've just created. So once we've got that fabric created, let's go ahead and apply some sewing to it. There you go. And a good feature that we can use is the superpose over. All right, and we're just going to change this to a light gray. All right, so once we got the back stripe all looking nice and how we want it, let's go ahead and work on the first three stripes on the front of the shirt. So what we're going to do to make our life easier, let's go ahead and just copy and paste the back, and then we're just going to paste it in the front. Now, we do need to do a little minor adjustment and tweaks to the back pattern so that it's a little more skinnier vertically and longer so what we're going to do is just take our pattern we're going to highlight it and we're also going to rotate it so we're going to rotate it together all right so once we rotate it and increase the size vertically let's go ahead and scale it down all together a uniform scale so once we got that now we can make sure that is the correct size of the garment that we are representing all right once we got them scaled down let's go ahead and add our stitching so one side to another there we go. Perfect. Let's go ahead and superimpose over. Right click. There you go. Superimpose over. And now what you want to do is just duplicate three of them. So once we've got all three patterns stitched to our pattern, that completes the garment of the fear of God goalie jersey. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and leave in the comment section below and leave a thumbs up on the video. And don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell all right you guys have a blessed year